This is going to be the biggest and most expensive car photo that I have ever taken. And I'm gonna bring you guys along and show you exactly how I did the photo. And we're gonna try and recreate a photo from the film Transformers Rise of the Beast, which is in theaters June 9th. So go get your ticket and check out the film because it's gonna be crazy. Calling all Autobots, roll out. We are shooting this wildly expensive Porsche 911 Turbo S in this massive warehouse. I'll be breaking down this photo in the composition, the lighting, the settings I use, and we'll even edit this photo together in post. So buckle up for probably the most ambitious photo of my entire career. So we'll start with this. I'm gonna move the lights out of the way, and then we'll move, we'll bring the Porsche in. You may or may not know this, but I am a massive fan of the Porsches. So when I saw that Transformers integrated a new character called Mirage, and he's a Porsche, I wanted to actually try and take a shot that was inspired by the Transformers film. Now, as you guys can see in this shot here, they drifted the Porsche into the warehouse, and we will unfortunately not be doing that today, but I am going to try and recreate all of the lighting and the framing that they have in this shot to try and do this myself. Now, finding a warehouse like this can actually be really challenging, but I'm very fortunate to have a friend who owns this massive space, but it also aligns perfectly with the whole Transformers theme because they do everything on a massive scale. So I think this fits pretty well. So now that we have the warehouse, I need to source a Porsche that looks similar to Mirage and Transformers. This is probably a lot for you, huh? So I was able to source this incredible Porsche 911 Turbo S, the 992 version. It is an absolutely gorgeous car, as you guys can see. Creating a shot like this is actually gonna take a lot of work. So I invited a ton of my creative friends to help me create this image, and I'm super happy with how it's turning out. So when I was setting up this shot, I wanted to get as close as possible to this actual frame that I pulled from the Transformers film. One thing that I'm concerned about is like this, we kind of lose depth on the front of the car, which would then mean I have oh, to like- I kind of prefer, I kind of I mean? prefer this. I agree. So we just need to frame it perfectly. Yeah, the car this way? I could use like the AI to build windows here, but that's oh, like a bit of a can. risk. So now that we have the car framed exactly where we want it, the settings that I have on my camera is a shutter speed of one over 20, an aperture of 1.8, so I can get as much light into that lens as possible. And then an ISO is set to 640, is that's the native ISO of the Lumix cameras. And the last thing that I do is make sure to set a two second self timer on the camera so that when you press that button and you're doing a low shutter speed, you don't get any shake on the tripod. So when it comes to creating this image here, you'll see a lot of warm tones and lighting in the front of the scene, creating the key light on the Porsche. And then in the background, you're seeing a lot of those blue tones. And that's how we're gonna get that cinema look in that contrast in the colors. Mark's helping me with all the lighting. So he's our like grip, gaff, light tech today, which is great. If we're creating warmth here and then bluer in the back, if that will be enough separation. Or we could even look at putting like a quote unquote hair light behind it to create that rim. Yeah. I'm assuming like 5200 or 3200 Kelvin is my guess. Already, Mark, that light on the car looks bonkers. It looks like it already looks bonkers. Is that light at 100%? So this can simulate lightning. Oh, so come on. Huh? Oh, this was poor planning. I wanna bounce that off this white side to like really soften it up. For sure. One thing I'm noting is how the light is hitting that spoiler. Yeah. All the lights we have right now are directional, which I'd prefer. Because we're, we're getting shade here and just fill in these shadows here. That's really all I'm looking for with that one. All right, so we have officially got the lighting dialed in. So when it comes to cinematic lighting, as you guys can see in that photo, it's really soft and warm lighting coming onto the Porsche. So I knew that my key light was going to be coming from this side of the car. So we got a big panel light set up here and a really nice soft source so that hopefully as the light spills over it, we can keep these hips looking really nice as well. The second light source that I have is over here. And this is just putting a nice kick light back here. So it's filling out most of the part on like the front of the car. You're gonna see that Porsche badge. And it's also giving us some nice contrast on the front of the car, which is sweet. But then what we notice is that this front part of the car wasn't quite lit enough and the rims were falling away into darkness. So that's why we put this big light up on the Skyjack as well to fill in that space. So now that it's dark enough out, we're gonna try and put a kick light from the background to give us a little bit of direction and shape. And then we'll have to haze this place out. And we might even do a few tricks at the end to make it look perfect. One of my favorite tricks for cinematic lighting is adding a bit of haze. 
So we're gonna let this spread out throughout this space, which obviously it's pretty big. So we're gonna get a big thing and spread it around. One last trick I have on my sleeve is this little cinematic trick called water. And you put it in front of the car. So let's go do that. You know, we're all getting old when eh? I'm like my back's like, ah. So it is 11 p.m. We are in the final stages of recreating this photo. As you guys can see, taking a photo like this or creating a film like Transformers is not the easiest thing to do for like one shot and they do that all day for several scenes of a film. So it just shows you a little bit of the, a sliver of the work that those people put in. We've got the haze, we got the car lit. Mark, you ready with the door? Ready. All right, we're gonna take the final shot. Here we go. Okay, do it. that's it at the beginning of the video I told you guys that this was going to be the most expensive photo shoot of my career and it was first of all we have a three hundred thousand dollar Porsche secondly we have a warehouse that could cost you thousands of dollars to rent by the hour for a production of this scale then we had lighting rentals the support crew people doing video behind the scenes so this is by far the most costly and ambitious photo I have ever taken and did it work out <laughs> and was it worth it well here is the image if you are asking me this photo turned out amazing and being able to match it to this reference photo was so much fun but i will caveat that this was a completely different editing style to what i would typically edit my photos for say posting to social media or an editorial so i'm actually going to try and take this photo a step further and i'm going to edit it my style and we're going to blow the roof off it and use some of the ai in photoshop to take this to the next level the first thing that i do when I get into Photoshop is I clean up the image so you can see we are cleaning up a broom that I forgot to move the haze machine that was plugged in right behind the car and then some of the details in the background the next thing I want to try and do is see if the new Photoshop beta could create a cooler background for me so the prompt that I gave Photoshop was moonlight spilling through big windows I surrounded this area and this is what it spit out. It gave me a whole bunch of really crazy options. So I actually ended up landing on this one as I felt it was more relevant to our photo and gave me a similar vibe to what was happening in the background of that Transformers photo. The next thing I wanted to do was add some windows to the left side of the frame. So I gave it a very similar prompt on here, which was add windows on the wall. These ones gave me that moonlight vibe. One con of the process when we were filming this was as soon as we opened up that bay door, all of the haze that we were using to fill the room went out the door. So in Photoshop, I went ahead and added more haze back into the room and made sure to mask it out so it didn't affect the car. The next thing that I wanted to do was add some directional light coming through these windows. So I found a great haze that makes it look like we've got window light coming through there. In the background, you can see the windows in the back. I wanted to add some extra additional haze coming through there. And the last thing I did was add a little bit of pop and haze coming off the headlights. It is absolutely incredible what the AI is capable of right now and being able to produce these insane <laughs> images in the background. But to me, this is a much more poppy image and something that will stand out greater on social media. But I am absolutely thrilled with how this whole entire photo shoot went. I'm thrilled with how the photo turned out. And I'm really grateful to Transformers Rise of the Beast for sponsoring this video and enabling enabling me to create one of the coolest images that I've ever created. What a cool sponsorship. So thank you, Transformers Rise of the Beast. Make sure to go check it out. I will absolutely be going to watch this in theaters. It is out in theaters June 9th, so make sure to grab your tickets and go and check it out. If you guys liked this kind of video, you might also like this video here, and I highly recommend subscribing for more content like this. Let me know what you guys think of the final image in the comments down below, and I do hope I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.